Hello and welcome to the Dark Room Green Screen Webinar. Uh, this uh, webinar will focus primarily on green screen and uh, how it works and the uh, setup of lighting and things like that. We'll spend a little bit of time on at the end. But here in the beginning, I want to start with just kind of demystifying green screen a little bit and tell you a little bit about how it works. And then we'll work on some uh, creating some green screen setups and things like that. But let's start with um, uh, basically green screen is it's not you know magic or anything. You photograph a subject in front of a solid background, in this case green. And uh, green is used simply because it occurs you know infrequently in clothing. Uh, it can you know someone can show up wearing a chroma key green shirt, but it's it's less likely than it would be for white or black or some other color. So that's why green is used, and it's commonly known as green screen photography. There are, you know, chroma key blues and things like that you can use if you're photographing a subject that's wearing green. But most people just use green, so green is by far the most uh, common and popular. So basically, you photograph the subject in front of the screen, and then the software takes the green, removes it, replaces it with the uh, the selected background goes all the way back to the days of film and it could be done with film back you know, many years ago but uh, with computers it's much simpler and faster and can be done with live video so this is a um, dark room uh, one of our basic uh, green screen sample events if you want to follow along and I'm going to click edit and just kind of dissect this screen a little bit and give you some uh, indication of how this all works so I'm going to move my countdown out of the way for right now Right here in the center of the screen, we have our live view, and you see this one has red curtains. And with these red curtains, I'm going to move my live view down. This is the live view window, and live view in this case is set for chroma key. The way you can quickly tell whether a screen or print template is made for green screen versus regular photography is uh, I'm going to switch this one to regular, and you'll see it's a solid gray box with live view in the center. The preview images or the photo nodes as we refer to them are the same way they would be solid gray and have a, a big one two three etc uh, in there so if you see a screen or print template that has a gray solid gray box with a number in it or live view in it those are made for regular photography they'll show the full background that you're taking a picture of but if they're selected for chroma key and you can see you do that right here check that little box that says chroma key then they're transparent and you can see through them. Oops, that's the text. Okay. They're transparent and you can see through them. So I'm going to check this one and turn it back to chroma key. And so that's how that chroma key works. Now, if you look behind the background, behind the live view or the, the print uh, preview, you'll see the background. Now, in this case, this is a single background. It's red curtains. And uh, you could uh, you know, make the background anything you want. It can be a JPEG, a PNG file. It can be a variety of file formats that Darkroom accepts. And you can resize it to match your live view. One thing that's really kind of nice, people call sometimes and say, hey, you know, do I have to tediously try to get those to match? Well, no, you can get them kind of close and then select the two items. In this case, we've got our live view selected. And we've got, uh, let's select our background and our live view so that's those two right there and then you can just right click choose make same size and position and darkroom will match them exactly just like that okay now same thing with our photo nodes or, or previews if you want to call it that it's uh, an individual preview in this case uh, this is number one behind it is an individual JPEG file that provides our actual uh, background and then we'll make a matching print template to go along with that. So I'm going to take uh, and drop out of this editor and go back to this, and we'll just go into a booth session so that you can see what it looks like with, uh, with it all in operation. And get our camera warmed up and going, and there's our live view. So you can see my model there. Um, and uh, she uh, she uh, is real still and doesn't talk much, but she she's a great model. And so you can see the model there, and then the uh, preview images on the left hand side of the screen. Now, when we go into an actual session, the uh, images are taken, 
and then they're moved over into the, the session and you see the image on top of the background. Um, and then when it's printed, it does the same thing. So you match with green screen, you match your background on your print template to the background in your screen. So let's jump down here to the print template now and take a look at that. This is a two by six template with three photos. And in this case, they're done as a composite, three grouped photos. That's the add photos instead of add photo. And uh, those are set for chroma key under the options. You can see chroma key is checked. And that makes it the transparent so you can see through it. And then we've just added our JPEG backgrounds of the red curtains in there. And so that's how you get the background set up to match the screen. Very simple, not complicated. We're going to go into some uh, more complex setups in just a minute with green screen selection and uh, that sort of thing. But for right now, I want to show you one with a background and a foreground. Okay? So let's take a look at a screen that I've kind of created here. This particular screen uses a background image. That's the one of the street scene and kind of a western theme. And then it uses a PNG foreground image that's added on top of that. And you can see I can move that around. In between those is our live view window. So you can look in our hierarchy over here in the template items list. These are like Photoshop layers. And each particular item is a separate layer that can be moved, adjusted up or down. So you'd want to have your background in the back, but then your live view on top of that, then your foreground on top of that, so that when you see it on the screen, your image is behind the foreground. So let's drop out of that. I'm uh, going to start a booth session here, and you'll see our model is back behind that fence post. Uh, you can do that for a variety of things, and this live view lets the user see how they are in relationship to the foreground and the background so they can move and adjust themselves, and you can even move them further or closer away to get the right perspective and things that you want to do with that particular situation. So you can do it that way with a foreground and a background object. Uh, once again, I'm going to jump back to the screen and edit it, and you can see it's just separate elements layered on top. When you make your uh, print template, you do exactly the same thing. And the, the print template, you go back over here to the print template, would be just a layer of, uh, of things where you've got your foreground on top, your photo layer number one behind that, and then your background layer behind that. Okay, So that's a uh, foreground and a background object used for green screen. Um, Let's take a look now at, uh, this is a, a simple screen that I set up using green screen that's full screen, unlike the others that use small uh, areas over it. This one uses the full screen. So you can see in this case, the live view is maximized to fill the screen. The background is behind. Here in the corner, we have a graphics list. Okay, Graphics list lets you choose different graphics that will appear in the same place. I'm going to double click on that to show you how that's made. You can see it's got a graphics list. When I click the edit button, the name of the graphic list is logo. Then you can see that I have three graphics in the graphics list, Cowboys, Miami, and Seahawks. Those are logos. And uh, those will allow you to select which logo you want on the screen. Now you would create the print template to match this with the same graphics list. It's important that when you do that, they have the same name, the same graphics included, and the graphics are in the same order. They be named the same. You can't, uh, you know, a computer to a computer is a, a space. Anything variable like that, an extra space, can make it not work. So it, the name has to be exact. All right. Uh, you can also see that I put a booth command on this one so that it chooses the next graphic. So here's how this works. So when you select, what this is basically the logic, follow along. When I touch the button, it's telling the button to execute the next graphic command. It's going to choose that graphic from the logo graphics list. Okay. So every time I touch that, it's just going to go to the next graphic. Now what I'm going to do is cancel that and get out of it and do a boot session so you can see how that works. There's my model again. 
Now you can see as I click on it with the mouse, you could do the same thing with a touch screen if you're using a touch screen. The graphic changes just as I touch it to step through it. So that's how you can use a graphic list to change logos and things. You can have multiple graphics lists in a particular screen or print template. You don't have to have just one. And you can have multiple overlays if you want to. So you could have a you know thing where you chose the background. You can also have them in sync. And we'll create one of these in just a few minutes from scratch so you can see how that works. But you can also have them in sync so when you make one change, several things change. Foreground, background objects, and so on. Okay, uh, let's take a look at green screen selection. This is the included green screen selection. And let's edit that. And for the purposes of this, uh, let's take that out just a minute. Okay, so this is, uh, this is one that comes with the software. It includes a three background graphics list. Over on this side, these are not previews. These are thumbnails to let you choose which background to use. Now, you can choose a background or a graphics list selection in two ways. One, you can have a thumbnail that when they touch, it chooses that background. Um, that's great if you have multiple backgrounds, many backgrounds to choose from. Or you can have the next and previous buttons, two separate buttons. So when you click next, it just goes to the next one. That's the command I used for that Seahawks and Cowboys uh, deal. Every time you touch it, it just rotates to the next one in the list. Uh, that's fine if you just have a couple or two or three, but if you have very many, it could get very tedious just hitting next a dozen times to go through. By the way, there's no real limit on how many backgrounds you can have in a background list or graphics list. Um, it's kind of up to you, but it's really more of a practical limit um, so that uh, you don't have, uh, you know, so many backgrounds that people take forever to choose which one they want. So let's uh, let's continue on through here. This and you'll see as I double click on that, you'll see that the the command here to make that change is choose graphic. In this case, BG scene. So we're choosing it from the background list BG scene, and it's choosing number one. So you give it the number of the list, a number of the uh, in the background in the list. So if you take a look, I'm going to move this live view down so I can see my graphics list. Here's my graphics list. It's called BG Scene, and it has three graphics in it. Again, name is important. It's very important that you have the same one. If you have a graphics list that's not working correctly, it could be that you've just got an extra space or an incorrect spelling or something in the name or title. So um, those are my backgrounds, and we'll select that. I'm going to put my live view back in place. So you can see each one of these, this one shows the command to be number two and so on. So as we select those, they change to the next background. Now then let's, uh, let's take a look at this and see how it works in practical application. Okay. So I'm going to hit start booth. We're going to go into the booth mode and live view comes on. There's my model. Uh, on the left hand side are my thumbnails that I can click on to change backgrounds and you can see over here, I've duplicated the graphics list and put it in smaller form uh, as a preview, and it shows up there, and I can change the backgrounds as well. Now, I'm going to run a session just for a second, and you'll see when it takes, it drops it over the preview and shows you the dropout. And there's my image. Okay? So that's how that that works. Now, you might say, well, how do I create a multi-opening strip? Well, let's, let's take a look at that. This is a single opening strip. This is a sample that comes with the software, and it has a single photo and my graphics list. So let's resize this down. And this is how you can easily edit things in uh, Darkroom. So I'm going to change that from a 4 by 6 to a 2 by 6 vertical. And so there is now my uh, my new strip. And what I want to do now is I want to get this okay, there's my uh, preview. And then here I'm going to click on size fit within page. And so there's my uh, now I can select both of them, right-click, and uh, 
make the same size and position. That puts them right on top of each other just fine. Now, there's both my graphic, or there's my first preview on my 2 by 6 So now I want to do that, say, three times. I'm just going to come down and click Duplicate. And I'm going to move, oops, move that down. I can double click on that and change that to photo two now. Okay. And I can duplicate it again and change that to photo three. Okay. So now I've got three photos. Now I'm going to go back to my graphics list and I'm going to duplicate that two more times. Okay. So now I've got graphics list. So here's what I need to do. I just need to drag all of these to the right order and get them all in place so that I have those overlapping correctly and move them to where they need to go. Okay. So now I've got photo one and photo two and I just line everything up like I wanted and now I've converted that single photo uh, graphics list background to a three photo and then you can you can dress it up add any other graphics or anything you want but you see how quickly that changes so the way the graphics list works in the print template again name the same thing with the same graphics also name the same thing in the same order and when you select the graphics list in the screen print the screen template it passes that information down to the um, print template and uh, print it out. Okay. Now, the next thing people ask is, well, what if I want to save the individual photos with a green screen background that they select? Okay. Here's how you do that. Copy originals. You can click on the copy originals, choose the size, etc., that you want. Most people would choose full size. The location that you want it to save in, and most people would use the default JPEG, but you can also select others. Then come down here and output with template. So you add a single photo template with your same graphics list. And then Darkroom will save each individual photo with that single template, single photo template in the correct background as well. Okay? Uh, you can save that to a folder and have that, you know, in a slideshow or something if you wanted to, or give it to the client after the event if you'd like. All right, I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, another type of green screen step and repeat. And then we're also going to discuss a little bit about uh, lighting, and then uh, we're going to create a graphics list here in just a minute. So let's go take a look at the screen. In this particular situation, this is just sort of a basic screen, but what I've done, I'm going to move some elements around and dissect this for you, is I've got my live view. It's set to chroma key, so it's, it's see-through. You can see that it's transparent. Then I've created just a gray rectangle, the same size as the live view. That's going to be my background. And then I've added our logo multiple times. I've just duplicated it over and over again and moved it around until I made my step and repeat. Okay, so that's how that step and repeat was made completely in darkroom. Didn't use Photoshop or anything else. Okay, now I'm gonna I could keep going and fill that whole screen. So let's drop out of that and let's run a session and take a look at it. Okay, so there's my live view and there's my model. Uh, on top of the live view so you can see what a step and repeat would be made to look like using green screen. All right, let's let's uh, let's make one, okay? Let's start off. I'm going to uh, just choose a, a random event and I'm going to edit this. And This is a basic screen that comes with Darkroom, but I'm going to turn it into a graphics list background selection. So let's move down here and I'm going to change this well, we'll do that in a minute okay let's start by taking my live view setting it to chroma key okay now then I'm going to add my backgrounds and so in this case I'm going to add artwork and I'm going to create a graphics list we're going to call this one background okay very simple background now that I'm going to click add to add my graphics and I'm going to choose a Vegas background and I'm going to click add again and choose a second background. You notice that those backgrounds are named 001002 so I know they're in the right order. I don't have to worry about that or misspelling or anything. Okay, I'm going to click OK. So there I have my first graphics list. 
all right? And I can resize those until I get that in my live view, the correct size, okay? Now that I'm going to add a second graphics list, and in this case, my live view needs to come down, okay? So I'm going to add a second graphics list with an overlay, a foreground object, all right? So let's add artwork. I'm going to click graphics list again, click at it, and here I'm going to call this foreground. Actually, let's make it simpler. Let's just call it star, okay? All right, in the star section, I'm going to add Wayne Newton, and I'm going to add Elvis, all right? So here we have a graphics list. It's named star, and it's going to have two backgrounds in it, one Elvis and one um, Wayne Newton, okay? So there is my overlay there. So I'm going to resize that down so that it fits nicely and drops in the right place there. And I want that to be behind my live view, so we'll drop it in there. Now then, uh, you can even go back to there. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we got uh, we got Wayne Newton in there, and we got our background and all that. And I'm going to just make a little bit of an adjustment in the positioning. So you got that all together. Now then, what I want to do is I want to add a button now, and I want to make this button the... Uh, the choose button. You could call it anything you want. And in my uh, booth command option, I'm going to uh, do next graphic. And then I'm going to choose my graphics list. Now this is a new feature for version 2. If you'll see here, I've got all graphics, background, and star. So in this particular screen, I have two different graphics lists. And what this option is doing, it's letting me say, okay, you can make this button choose only the background or this button, choose only the star, or you can have both of them move in, in uh, together. You can have uh, one button change both of them together. So depending on how you want that to work, if I always want one background to be with one foreground, I would choose all, and if I want one, uh, you know, to let them choose both of them, then I'd put two buttons and let them choose, you know, whichever one they want. For this illustration, I'm going to choose all, okay? So let's click OK and click OK. All right, so now we got this all set up like we want it. Let's save that and run the session. And there we have uh, Wayne Newton standing next to our model. We can adjust the size and perspective a little bit so that they're more in, in, uh, in alignment with each other as far as how close the camera is to the subject and things. But if you'll notice, when I click Choose, the background and the foreground change at the same time. And so I can use that to adjust uh, a variety of things depending on how many, and you could do that with three, four, or five graphics lists if you wanted to change your logos and, and uh, foreground objects and all sorts of things. So you could change that in a variety of ways. Okay? I want to spend just a few minutes now on um, the, uh, the lighting and things. Okay? So I'm going to come over here and take one second to look at this right here. Okay, now the lighting I'm using right now and have been using throughout this, this webinar for the lighting of the green screen and stuff is the is two umbrellas. They're about 24 inches each, 24 inches diameter each. And essentially they're called hot lights. They're about a 100 watt bulb and a reflector shining through the umbrella. The umbrella is facing the, the customer. The domed part of the umbrella is facing the customer. And that gives a very nice, soft, even light. Uh, for green screen, it's best to use a good, soft, even light that just wraps around the subject and covers the background and everything, and that gives good illumination. A pinpoint source like a, a flashlight, a, a small reflector, the on-camera flash, those kind of things, don't usually give as good a results as a wraparound lighting. So you can see in this particular situation, we've got a good, nice, even lighting, and my exposure is correct. That's what's really key. The exposure is correct, so you've got good definition in the uh, the foreground areas. Uh, in her eye sockets, they're not dark. You can see her bright blue eyes. You can see her clothing. This good drop out throughout her clothing, and her hair is nicely separated. Now, for the purposes of this particular uh, illustration, uh, there's three things that affect your exposure when you're using constant lights like this. There's the ISO of the camera. And we're going to do some more webinars later on that will deal more with how to get the best results from your camera exposure settings. But we have the ISO from the camera. We have the, um, the f-stop or the aperture. And then we have the shutter speed. 
settings, okay? So for this particular application, I'm going to adjust just the ISO, leaving everything else the same, so you can see how it dramatically affects the dropout when your photo is not exposed correctly. So this next photo you're going to see goes from 800 ISO to 400 ISO. That's half as sensitive, so the exposure is half what it was. Okay, so you can see my model's just gone transparent, her eye sockets are gone, everything is just gone. Then when I go half again down to 200, you can see it's even worse. When I go half again down to 100, it's just awful. So this particular picture is four times less exposed than this one, okay? So now I'm going to drop out of this and show you what the actual photos look like. Now this is what a properly exposed green screen looks like. Um, the background could be a little, little bit better to give a little better definition and drop out, but this one is a properly exposed. You can see her skin tone is good. You can see the nice bright blue eyes. And uh, so this is a properly exposed. Uh, then here we have the one that was done at uh, 400. This one was at 800 again. So this is half the exposure. You can see it's already getting darker. This one could still be pulled out. Um, the, the green is getting darker near black. This one, too far, way too dark. The, the green is not green, it's not chroma key green anymore. It should be more like this. This is now near black, especially in the corners. So this one is just way underexposed. And of course, this is just even worse. So this is what it should look like. And when you do it this way, then you'll get green screen dropouts that look like this. The only thing that changed there was the, um, the exposure, okay? So let's take another look at another example of different kinds of lighting. I want you to see this one right here. This one uses the on-camera flash only, all right? With the on-camera flash only, you see uh, the, the lighting is, is good and clear in her eyes but it's a very pinpoint source, so there's also some heavy shadows and things, and you can see this kind of in behind her. There's a little shadowing starting to show. Um, this next image is taken with the room lights only. That's I'm in an office with just typical little four by two fluorescent panels, which you typically find in a, in a typical you know office construction situation. And so you can see the light is mostly coming from over her head. Uh, that's why the, the hair is blown out at the top and her eyes are kind of shaded and dark. And you can see her neck is shaded by her chin and her clothing doesn't have as much definition there. Um, there's fewer shadows, so there's a pretty decent dropout, but the lighting on the subject is not very good. Then this next one here, you'll see a totally different situation because now we've got my two lights on, my hot lights with the umbrellas, where you can see good definition in her eyes, you can see good separation with her hair, her hair's not blown out at the top, and her clothing is not blown out uh, with little detail, and you can see a good dropout. Now I'm going to show you one more that is done with a professional lighting setup using four lights, two on the background, two on the subject. This one even has a clearer, sharper background dropout with no shadows or anything else. This is, this is a very good dropout right here. Now I'm going to show you what those photos look like without um, Here's the, uh, the green screen only, no background. This is the one that had the on-camera flash. You can see the harsh shadows at the bottom. Here's the one with a room light only. Here's the one with my professional lights. Uh, much better quality dropout. Now I want to do one more thing to show you an illustration of what the lighting can look like with your live view. So if you take this one right here, this is my lights on again. We got Good definition in the hair. It's not blown out from you know too much above. We've got good eye sockets. They're not shaded or, or hollow. And we've got all the dropout looking really good there as well. No harsh shadows. Clothing is all dropped out. And again, that's with the, uh, the big lights. Now I'm going to take and turn off those lights so you can see with just the room light only. Okay, this is the overhead light that's in my office. And you'll see it's still decent, it's not bad, it's starting to get a little pixelated and noisy in her clothing areas that are shaded because the light is solely overhead. And you also see a little bit more of a hot spot on top of her head because the light is just directly above her. And so you see what that looks like. Now I'm going to turn the room light off to simulate what it would look like in a lot of the venues that I've been to in my years of doing this so that you can see with very low light 
how pixelated and noisy the live view gets. This is basically a result of the camera cranking up the auto ISO way high to be able to still get a good image and that causes the image to be very noisy and pixelated and that's what all that is, is seen. The only light in this room right now is the light from a window that's filtering in. It's bright enough to read a newspaper but it's still pretty dark and uh, so you can see the difference that just good quality light makes to your live view and to your images. So let's turn those lights back on um, and you'll see now how much clearer and sharper and no pixelation and no noise just from better quality lights. So if you're not pleased with the way your live view looks, um, just you might just need to add more light and that's usually the better way to do that. Okay, I hope you uh, enjoyed the uh, webinar and you learned something. We do plan to have some more real soon. We've got another one scheduled next week that will cover Facebook, fidget support, and video playing and some more advanced topics. We also have some in the works for screen and print template design, more advanced techniques there, as well as uh, more detailed uh, webinars on camera exposure and, and how to get the best from your equipment. Thank you very much for joining us today, and I hope uh, you learned something.